Hey, what is going on, guys? It's XX Modded Warfare XX Gamer Tag Banjo Chicken here. It has been a very long time since I've used that intro, probably the last time that I made an Xbox 360 video. But believe it or not, we actually have something pretty big here for the Xbox 360. There is a new software only hypervisor exploit from Grim Doomer, Xbox 360 bad update. And this is the first software based hypervisor exploit that we've got for the 360, a method of essentially running unsigned code, which can allow you to run homebrew applications and emulators on your Xbox on stock firmware without any kind of hardware level exploit. No RGH, no JTAG hack, none of that required here. Now, it, this is mainly meant as a proof of concept at the moment, but I did try and take it as far as I could uh, to the point where you can actually load multiple homebrew apps and go back and forth between homebrew applications and emulators using this. You can see I've even got Aurora running here uh, on my 360 on a stock NAND. Now, to be clear, this is not really meant to be used in place of an RGH because at the end of the day, there are quite a few uh, downsides to this particular exploit at the moment. For instance, it's a tethered exploit, which means you do have to rerun it whenever you reboot the console. Not only that, but it only has a 30% success rate. It's also based on a race condition. If the condition is not met, then it will continue running indefinitely. So you have to at least give it 20 minutes to see if it's going to work and if it's going to be successful. And if it's not worked within the 20 minutes, then you have to go ahead and reboot and reload it again. Also, as a disclaimer, I would not recommend doing this if you are using your console on Xbox Live, because this could, of course, result in a console ban, especially if you are running homebrew applications while you're connected to Xbox Live. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to set up this exploit from scratch. And I'll also show you how I managed to get it so that you can load multiple homebrew applications and how to get different homebrew applications and emulators working with this exploit. So I'm going to cover all of that here in this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to set this up. So of course, in order to run this, we need the game Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. So you'll need a retail copy of this game. It needs to be the Xbox 360 version, not the Xbox Classics version. And also it needs to be either the NTSC or PAL version of the game at the moment. At least those are the ones that have been confirmed working. Obviously, if you have a flashed drive in your Xbox 360 like I do, I was able to just burn a copy of this game and I can load it from my flash drive from my burned disk. So that is how I'm going to load this. But generally, if you don't have a flash drive, you'll have to go ahead and get a copy of that game in order to load this. We also need to get the Xbox updated to dashboard version 17559, which is currently the only version that is supported. And that is the latest dashboard version at the time of recording. So you'll probably already be on that version. But if you're not, I'll show you how to update it real quick. All you have to do is head over to support.xbox.com. I'll leave a link in the description and you can scroll down to copy to a USB flash drive and then download the Xbox 360 system update file. Once you have that downloaded to your computer, as I've got it right here, system update, you'll see that the zip file says the version 17559. Make sure it is that version in case a new dashboard update does actually come out sometime in the future and it's a different version. You need to check to make sure it's 17559 because you don't want to install a newer version in case it, say, patches the exploit, for instance, although that is unlikely. So what we can do there is head on over to a USB drive. The USB drive needs to be formatted in FAT32 format. And then you just want to copy the system update folder to the root of that USB. That's all you got to do. Once it's copied, you can unplug the USB drive and plug it into your Xbox 360. And when you get that message, you just click yes to do the update. It will extract it from the USB and install it. And once it's installed, you'll be updated to dashboard version 17559. Now you can check your dashboard version to see if you're already on 17559 by heading into the settings, going to system, then going to console settings and scroll down to system info but do not select the option just hover over it and it says dashboard as you can see 2.0.17559 so the 17559 is your dashboard version there okay so if we plug our usb drive back into the computer here now we're on 17559 we can download the xbox 360 bad update and download the zip file here you can also download the tools.zip in order to make specific homebrew apps compatible with this so download both of those files there Okay, so what we want to do is plug in a USB drive into our computer and then open up the Xbox 360 bad update. Make sure your USB drive again is formatted in FAT32 format. Then we're going to go into the Tony Hawk's American Wasteland folder and copy the contents of this folder into the root of your USB drive. And that will get it all on there. 
<clears throat> now there is a homebrew app already included inside the bad update payload. It's just a default.xcx file that plays a video, a Nyan Cat video. So that is what you can expect if you run the exploit successfully. Now what I will also show you is how you can use XCX menu. And I'll also show you how you can change this to load a different homebrew application. So for XCX menu, which is what I would recommend, because the advantage is what you can do is you can actually download an ISO of XCX menu and burn it to a disk, which will allow you to load XCX menu from the disk once the exploit is loaded. And that way, whenever you go back to the dashboard, you'll always be able to load XCX menu again from the disk, which will then allow you to load other homebrew applications from XCX menu. So that is the way that I would recommend setting this up right now. So if we head back over to our browser, there is a ISO of XCX menu for version 1.1. I haven't seen a version for 1.2, but if I do find one, I'll leave it down in the description. But this one will work as well. So we can download this XCX menu 1.1 ISO and then we can burn that to a disk. So you'll need image burn for this, which I'll leave in the description. And then the XCX menu ISO, which you can open with a program like WinRAR or 7-zip. And then you can extract the ISO file out. And then if you just open up image burn and then write image file to disk, copy the ISO file inside, put in your blank disk, and then click the button to write it to the disk. It's, it's only 60 megabytes, so it'll fit even on a 700 megabyte CD. So you can burn it to a CD or a DVD and you'll be able to run it with this exploit. So that is the recommended way to do this. However, if you do not have access to a burner and you're just going to try and run a specific homebrew application, what we can do is get it to load something like Aurora, which will then allow us to launch other homebrew applications. So the way that we can do that is replace this with Aurora instead. So if we head over to uh, phoenix.xboxunity.net, you can download Aurora. So you can just download the release package there. And then from here, we can take Aurora and just extract the contents here into the bad update payload. So we'll just copy the contents of Aurora in here. And now we have all of the files in here. We can now delete default.xcx, which is the Nyan Cat video, and then just rename aurora.xcx to the same name. So it's called default.xcx as well. Now this will not launch by default because uh, the XCX needs to be patched to remove all restrictions and to be set as a retail XCX instead of a dev kit XCX, which I think it is by default. So we need to patch it. So we can patch it using the tools.zip. Inside here, you will find XE patcher. And if you extract that out to your computer here, you will have access to XEX tool. So all we're gonna do is right click and open it in terminal in the same folder as XEX tool to patch this homebrew app to run with the exploit. So then we just want to go to the 360 bad update wiki. This will be linked in the description, of course. You just want to copy this XCX tool command here, and then we can paste it in. Now, because I'm running this in a PowerShell window, I need to do dot forward slash at the beginning to make it executable, and then change the XCX file path to the path of our XCX file. We can do that by just dragging it into PowerShell, and that will copy it there. You might want to put it in double quotes in case you have any um, spaces in the file name or in the file path. And then we can just press enter and that will patch it. You can see it removes all limits, removes all restrictions. And it also sets it, I believe, to a, a retail XCX file, which is what we need. So once that is done, this should now be bootable with the exploit. We should be able to load Aurora with this. So now we are all set and ready to go. We can eject our USB and plug it into our Xbox 360. So I had to make sure that I actually had a console that was not RGH'd. At first I thought all my consoles were RGH'd and then I remembered that I do in fact have a console that has a dual NAND chip, uh, which so it is RGH'd, but if you switch it off, if you switch the chip off, it switches to the retail NAND and turns off the glitch chip. So it basically just boots into a stock firmware, not RGH'd. So that is what I'm using here to kind of represent my stock system, which is also good because the hard drive that's in it has a bunch of homebrew and other stuff that are good for testing. And of course it has a flash drive. So I was able to just burn a copy of American Wasteland to a dual layer DVD. And then I can use that to run it on the system. But again, if you don't have a flash drive, you'll need to get a retail copy of the game there. So with the game inserted here, what we need to do is sign in to the appropriate profile. Um, so what we're gonna do is just sign into the profile the profile is the profile that's on the USB drive, which is player one. So it says MU for memory unit. So that's the one you want to select there. So we'll go ahead and select that. And we'll say no to connect to Xbox Live. So there we go. We are now signed into the profile and now we can play American Wasteland. Okay, so once the game loads up, we need to head into high score slash free skate. 
and then we will say no to this message and then select a skater then select play level and then from there we're going to scroll up to the bottom level which is created park we're going to select that and then load park and then we'll say yes to load and then very important you need to select the usb storage device here which has the save file on it so we're going to select that first and then we have hack xbox which is on the usb so we're going to press a on that to select it so load successful press a again to click ok and then finally a to play park and that will start loading the hypervisor exploit at this point i recommend starting a timer on your phone or on google you know just type in stopwatch and start a timer and you're basically timing it for 20 minutes because it, this is again based on a race condition so if the race condition is not met it will just keep running indefinitely so you have to wait at least 20 minutes to give it time to load i have had it load as early as like four minutes in the past four or five minutes and uh, I've also had it take about 17 minutes in some cases for it to load. So you do really have to give it the full 20 minutes to know that it's not worked. And then you can turn it off, turn it back on and then redo the process and start another timer and keep doing that until it eventually loads successfully. So this is what we have to do. We just it's a waiting game at this point uh, to try and get this to load successfully. Now, while it's running, you'll see some different LED patterns appear on the front of your console. When you first launch it, you'll get two LEDs, I think player one and player two, indicating stage one. Now, these LED indicators are mostly meant for uh, fat model consoles because there will be also orange LEDs, which give you a better indication of each stage of the exploit as it's running. But all that you really need to know is that it, it's working when all four LEDs are lit up. So when you have all four player one, player two, player three, and player four LEDs, as if you have four controllers connected, if they're all lit up at the same time, that means the exploit has loaded. So if your homebrew app has not loaded and it's kicked you out to the dashboard saying there's like a game error or something like that, then that's probably because the executable that you tried to load was not correctly patched to remove all restrictions and to be set in retail mode. You must do that to your homebrew applications, otherwise they will not load unless they're already uh, set like that, which some are, but most of them aren't. So you'll have to patch them manually with XCX tool, as I've just shown how to do with Aurora. So in our case, luckily, we don't have any issues because we correctly patched it. And as you can see, it is correctly loading us into Aurora here. So this took about four attempts here to get it going. And as you can see, we now have Aurora successfully loaded. So we have an actual homebrew app running on our stock system. And I have already gone ahead and scanned my hard drive for any applications. There's a bunch of applications found here. Now, the issue that we have here when you're just loading a homebrew app directly is that you can only use it to launch one other application and then you're stuck because unless that application also allows you to load additional applications, like you can go from, say, Aurora to XCX Menu, back to Aurora, back to XCX Menu, for instance, because both Aurora and XCX Menu allow you to launch XCX files. However, if you, for whatever reason, go back to the dashboard or you try and launch a game and then go back to the dashboard, uh, you're basically not able to launch any other executables from the Xbox 360 dashboard and then you're stuck. So that's the issue with this at the moment. So that is where burning XCX menu to a disk really comes in handy here because if I go back to the dashboard here where I would normally be stuck, unable to load anything else, uh, what I can do is I can just insert that uh, CD that has XCX menu on it and after I wait a few seconds for that to load, it will actually say play game allowing me to launch it. And if I launch it, it does take a little while. It goes into a black screen, takes a few seconds, but you'll see that it will successfully load me into XCX menu. So whenever I go back to the dashboard, I always have the option to get back on XCX menu from the disk so that I can then launch other homebrew applications and emulators or go back to Aurora if I want to. That's the big advantage of using a disk to load XCX menu with this. Now, in addition to this, I can also patch other executables. Okay, now that we have XCX menu running, we can basically take any other homebrew or emulators that we want to run. In this case, I have this SNES emulator here and I can copy it to that USB drive and then just use XCX tool to patch the executable again to remove all the limits and set it to retail mode. So all we have to do is that and then we can plug that USB drive back again into the Xbox 360 and we'll be able to load it from XCX menu by just selecting the folder and selecting the default.xcx file to load. And we now have an emulator up and running on our 360 and we get a fitting achievement unlocked here. So 100G, we have successfully unlocked Homebrew on a stock console. So yeah, that is basically it. You can switch between multiple Homebrew applications and emulators 
uh, with the XTX menu CD. Whenever I go back to the dashboard, I can just load XTX menu again from the disc and then load a different homebrew app or emulator. I did also try to load a few um, Xbox 360 games by launching their XTX files. Um, I just got the same error message where it kicks me out. I tried to patch them in XTX tool, but I was also getting errors there as well. It still wasn't launching. So perhaps you need to customize the XEX tool settings or change the settings a bit uh, in the patching process to get uh, retail games to work because uh, the current settings seem to be corrupting uh, the XEX or not allowing uh, the games to load. So there's an issue there, but homebrew applications and emulators are running just fine. So anyway, that is basically it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this throwback to the old Xbox 360 days. Well, if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I will hopefully see you guys in the next video.